Humans have an amazing ability to identify and categorize thousands of things in the world into classes of objects. A large portion of the cerebral cortex is dedicated to the coding of object information, located in the lateral occipital and ventral temporal cortex. We asked in our study what happens in the brain of a patient who has a lesion in this part of the visual system. SM is a 32-year-old male who sustained brain damage in a motor vehicle accident when he was aged 18. After extensive rehabilitation, he recovered well, but has persistent object agnosia and prosopagnosia. SM is slow and inaccurate in both face and object recognition. For example, he mistook a picture of a pretzel for a snake and a picture of a harmonica for a cash register. Importantly, SM has normal language and normal sensory and low-level vision, and his recognition failures are restricted to the visual modality. We used functional MRI in order to perform a comprehensive case study of patient SM. As a first step, we documented the organization of SM's visual cortex and analyzed the lesion site relative to the bounds of early visual areas. The hallmark of early visual cortex is that it contains orderly representations of visual space, also known as retinotopic maps. This illustration shows these retinotopic maps in occipital cortex of the right hemisphere in a normal control subject. The gray areas denote the cortical sheet that was reconstructed as a flattened surface. Retinotopic mapping revealed regular patterns in the functional organization of early visual cortex in SM relative to healthy subjects. The black region shows a lesion in the right hemisphere, located just anterior to human area B4 and confined to a circumscribed region in the posterior part of the lateral fusiform gyrus. To assess the functional responses of cortical tissue around the lesion site, we defined a rectangular grid that was placed relative to the lesion and consisted of 60 sectors. Anatomically equivalent locations and control subjects were also probed. Dorsal sectors covered most parts of functionally localized lateral occipital complex, a region that is known to respond selectively to objects and healthy subjects. Importantly, we examined both the lesioned right hemisphere and the structurally intact left hemisphere NSM by centering the grid on mirosymmetric locations in the structurally intact left hemisphere. First, we measured visual responsiveness to objects as compared to blank image presentations. In the control group, the majority of grid sectors in both hemispheres responded well to visual stimulation. Similarly, in patient SM, the majority of grid sectors in the lesioned right hemisphere, as well as the intact left hemisphere, were visually responsive. A comparison of the number of activated sectors between the group and SM revealed no differences in the left or right hemisphere. Next, we probe neural selectivity to different types of object stimuli. In the group, 68% of the grid in the right hemisphere showed object selective responses. In SM, only 13% of the grid, dorsal to the lesion, were object selective, and that was significantly reduced compared to the control subjects. Much to our surprise, when we examined SM's structurally intact left hemisphere, object selective responses were not normal either. In the group, 70% of the grid showed object selective responses, but dramatically in SM, only 4% of the grid in the left hemisphere responded in an object selective manner, again showing significant differences between SM and the group. Our case study has important implications for both clinical and basic research. The dramatic reduction of functional response properties, here object selectivity, in structurally intact tissue far away from the lesion side shows us how important it is to consider distance effects in addition to the loss of functionality in the vicinity of the lesion itself. But as M's case does not only teach us about the pathology of brain function in visual agnosia, it also provides important evidence that object perception more generally may be under the control of the right hemisphere in the healthy brain. Lastly, we would like to thank SM for his participation in our study.